We talk about store checks that analysts do quite frequently. Can you walk me through how that works, what you do? Do you just go to dealerships and kind of monitor what kind of inventory is moving? Uh, no, uh, typically we're picking up the phone, calling sales centers across the country. In this case, we spoke to 18 sales centers across the United States. Um, you know, and it's a fairly, hopefully, in-depth, qualitative conversation, just trying to get a sense of, you know, obviously what they're doing delivery-wise, what they're seeing demand-wise on the order front, um, and just any other sort of bits of color um, that, that they might be willing to share. Brad, you write in your note that Model 3 deliveries track around 5,000 uni units, which you say is below the sell side, but li likely acceptable to the buy side, which I find to be sort of an amusing characterization. <laughs> yeah. The degree to which investors seem to be overlooking, dis you know, what on paper looks like disappointment. Is, will there come a point at some point in 2018 where these numbers would no longer be acceptable to the buy side? Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, the, these guys are going to have to fulfill and deliver on promises they've been making for the last several years, and they will have to ramp up production in 2018, and they'll have to show uh, gross margin improvement is kind of the most important metric that investors are watching. But yeah, it's, you, you make a good point, and you picked out a, a, an interesting piece of the note. Um, the buy side, it's hard to say that like the buy side is at a certain level. The buy side is really more focused on just seeing that they're ramping up production, that right. the car is awesome, and that people will continue to buy it. That's what the buy side cares about. So when you look at these uh, delivery estimates going lower, is that a function of production or is it a function of demand? Uh, it's, a, it's definitely a production issue. These guys. So the demand, have, is still there? Yeah, when you have a 450,000 plus order book uh, in hand, uh, yeah, I don't think anybody's going to be questioning demand for a while on this product. It's more just a function of can they produce it and how fast. I, going back to this sort of sell side, buy side disparity <laughs> view on Tesla, because I find this to be really interesting in the sense that yep. you can't really put a number on the buy side. As you say, they want to see improvement. And yeah. obviously, a lot of people like the story. And so as long as the story continues, then maybe some of these short and medium term numerical numbers don't matter as much. That being said, your job as a sell side analyst and you talk to uh, clients about all this. So how do you do that? How do you sort of calibrate what information is actually going to affect the stock? <laughs> well, good question. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, in our models, we, we have to have some expectation and a forecast. Um, but it's interesting when you talk to investors about this one in particular, often what you hear, and I'm not necessarily talking about Q4, but just in general, as you talk to Tesla investors going into any, any print, you'll hear a lot of like, you know, it would be great if they hit this number, but I'm okay if they still hit, you know, say 3,000 or 4,000 or some some arbitrary number lower. The the bar seems to continue to sort of ebb lower into these moments um, because I think investors, you know, as you look longer term here, these guys are hopefully ramping to something close to 5,000 a week by next year, production-wise, on the Model 3. If they miss by 1,500 units in Q4, is it really that big of a deal in the long run? No. And I think that's kind of how buy-side investors tend to look at this.